Good morning, I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. And uh, we welcome you to our mornings with Brian and Tyler. Today, as we continue studying what the Bible teaches about blessing and prosperity, remember Genesis 12, the Lord said, I'll bless those who bless you. The Lord says, I'll make you a blessing. The Lord had a blessing and a promise for Abraham. Uh, Genesis 14, this is after the battle of the kings with Abraham and Lot being rescued. And so we're going to pick up at 14, verse 18, through the end of the chapter, Tyler. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God Most High. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. Now the king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the persons and take the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord, God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap, and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should say, I have made Abram rich, except only what the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men who went with me, Aner, Eshkol, and Mamre. Let them take their portion. All right. So first of all, um, Abraham's not denying what the king of Sodom is willing to offer him uh, because he's waiting for something. We saw in chapter 13, Abram was already rich. But this is the play of politics and, and other stuff. Now, Abram, who knows how much more wealth Abram could have done if he'd have taken this. Abram was already wealthy. Abram was already powerful. The dude had his own company of trained warriors. Abram's fighting guys and a couple other guys went and defeated everybody else that had just whipped the king of Sodom and all their people in that valley. Okay? So Abram's got wealth. Abram has power. But if he keeps the stuff then the king of Sodom has him. The king of Sodom is able to say, see, if you're my ally, look how well I take care of you. And it, and it creates this uh, sense of obligation. So when Abram says, I'm not going to take anything from you, not even a latchet, dude. Okay, not, not so much as a penny from you, guy. Lest you should say, because what's Abram able to say? The Lord, for Abram, it was El Shaddai has made me wealthy. The Almighty, the Bountiful One, has made me wealthy. So when people want to say, why should I do business with Abraham? Well, El Shaddai takes care of me. And then they look at his wealth and they go, oh yeah, yeah. He was already rich. This was a political play on the part of the king of Sodom. The problem most of us have in our lives, and you know, uh, and not very long ago I taught about this on a Sunday night, I think it was, about people in churches pretending that they're not rich. You got a house that's, you know, at least a quarter of a million dollars value. You're sitting on land that's anywhere between a hundred and three hundred thousand dollars value. You got more than one car, and they're all paid for. Everything in your house is furnished and paid for. All told, your net worth, liquid and real assets, somewhere between half a million and, and a million dollars. And you want to sit there and say, well, I'm not rich. But then when someone starts trying to give a glory to God, hey, look, man, I worked hard for this. See, you're not operating in blessing. You're not operating in blessing. Yeah, Tyler, you know, Tyler won't drink coffee with me, so he has to yawn during the morning sessions. But that was Abraham's point. Abram knew he didn't get it by himself. Abram knew he was blessed by the Lord. And he wasn't going to let anybody get in the way of that. Not Lot, not the king of Sodom, 
nobody. So, other thoughts, my brother? No, sir. With Adam Brown Reagan, this is Tyler Kelly. Tyler Yawn and Dog Kelly. And we will see you tomorrow morning.